So when I wanted to make a non-linear FX into linear model, at that time, I just wanted to make it as a single category. Here, weights of evidence of coding is also used either in order to increase or decrease the relationship with this y. So when we are having a comparison between one variable to another variable, it is always ranges from minus 1 to plus 1. Everybody, a warm welcome to one and all. I am Rohini TS from the Department of Computer Science, Vidyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. So, in our today's session, we are dealing with a BCS final year that is fifth semester of a subject called Cloud Computing and Big Data Analytics, and we are in the unit four of a session two. So, that is data preprocessing and analytics. In our today's session, let me continue with a further concept. So here we have a next concept that is categorization. What is this categorization is all about? So already we have discussed about the analytics of a big data and also we have made the uh, data which has been standardized. Now I have some samples. I just wanted to reduce the number of uh, samples. I just wanted to reduce the number of categories. For that purpose, we are going to have this categorization so that the categorization or a categorical variable, it is needed to reduce the number of categories. So this is also called as what? Course classification, classing, grouping, binning. So we are going to do this categorization for various purpose. Mainly or main intention of this categorization is to reduce the number of samples or a number of categories. That is the main thing. So with the categorization, one would create a categories of values such that fewer parameters will have to be estimated and more robust model is obtained. So if we have less data, then the accuracy will be more. So if we have more data, then there could be a possibility of uh, getting the large number of errors. Then it requires more time in order to detect it and in order to treat that. So when we are having a category, so it is like what uh, short and sweet. We are going to have a data and elements which is so efficient and so effective and it will going to reduce us the number of categories. So here you can uh, see the example of for the continuous variables, categorization may also be very beneficial. So you can take the example of age versus uh, risk. That means uh, risk versus age. So if you see here in the age of 25, the risk will be very high. Okay, And uh, in the age of 20, somehow it will be low. In the age of 15, it will be low. For 10 and uh, 5, 0, we won't consider the risk. So the amount of risk will be very low. And if you consider the risk level here, we have 16, uh, 26, 51, 64, 75. So as we like, uh, if the age increases, then the risk will be high. So this is what there is a relationship between the age as well as the risk. So it is, uh, you can see as it is depicted. So that means what we are minimizing the number of variables. We are minimizing the number of categories. I am not taking a range from 0 to 100. I am 0 to 150. I am not taking from this uh, 16 to 160. I am just minimizing the number of samples in order to make a category. And also there is a non-monotonous relationship between the risk and age. Non-monotonous in the sense what? It is uh, changing. So it is changing as per the uh, things which is taking place between the risk and age. So as we grow up, the risk will be high. So when we are in the middle age or when we are in the young age, at that time, risk will be low. So it will be considered as what? non-monotonous, non-monotonous in the sense, monotonous in the sense, same relationship or same activities, non-monotonous in the sense, it, uh, there will be a fluctuations, there will be a changes. So, if a non-linear model, for example, neural network support vector machines were to be used, then the non-linearity can be perfectly models. That means uh, when the changing of uh, uh, any of the uh, categorization taking place, at that time we have to use a non-linear model because it is not static or it is not going to be in a straight line. For example, uh, for the age of 50, for the age of 60, all the time what uh, risk can, uh, cannot be same. Risk cannot be same or cannot be uh, linear. So there could be a possibility of high risk, there could be a possibility of low risk that can take place. So for that purpose, we are uh, going to use non-linearity in order to depict the non-monotonous relationship which occurs between the risk and age. 
So if a regression model is to be used, like uh, it will be what uh, only single line. If it is okay or if it is belongs to some particular category, we will uh, categorize that. So if not, that will be another category. So we can't deal this uh, regression model for the non-monotonicity. So that is the main thing you have to remember. So by categorization, the variable into ranges part of the non-monotonicity can be taken into account in the regression. So when we are dealing with a regression at the time, this categorizing the variable can be taken into ranges. So instead of taking this as a 50, 60, I can just make it as category 1. So by doing that, we can uh, use this categorization method in the non-monocity activities. Hence, categorization of the continuous variables can be useful model for the non-linear effects into linear models. So, when I wanted to make a non-linear effects into linear model, at that time, I just wanted to make it as a single category. So, that category can be takes place with the help of this categorization of a continuous variable. This is related to categorizations and also this we have a various methods can be used to do the categorization. What are the methods we have? We have a two very basic method. One is equal interval binning. So binning is also called as categorization and we have a equal frequency binning. So these are the two methods which will be used in order to do the categorization. So this one will be the uh, difference between one data elements to another data elements. Here we are going to deal with the frequencies. That is the difference between or the two important aspects that will be considered for the uh, categorizations. And also we have one more method that is chi-square method. So this is uh, one of the method in order to use for the sophisticated way to do the core classification. So, if I wanted to have a classifications or if I wanted to do the uh, binning, at that time we are going to use this chi-square analysis. So, you can consider the example for close classifying a resident status of a variable, whether they are owner or rent with unfurnished and rent with furnished. So, are they living with their parents or others? Okay. So, they don't want to disclose the answer, no answer. So, by this chi-squared method, we can make a categories. So for that, here cause classification, the residential status variable. So that we have a owners, rent unfurnished, and we have a rent furnished, and they are living with their parents, and others, they don't want it to disclose. So how we are going to do that? Suppose we want to have a three categories, okay? You just consider, we want to have a three categories, and consider the following options. What is the option one? I can have a owners and whether they are renters, whether it is unfurnished or furnished and others. And I have one more option like uh, owners with parents and others. So out of this, I have to make a choice. Out of this, I have to make a choice. I wanted to make it as category. Okay. So this rent, so rent whether furnished or unfurnished will be considered as one category and I will take this owner, rent and others. This will be category one. And if I'm taking any owner's rent as well as with their parents, then that will be another category. This is category 2. So there will be two options in order to make a category. Along with that, both the options can now be investigated using chi-square analysis. So uh, those two categories can be investigated with the help of the squared ma uh, categorization method. And the main purpose is to compare the empirically absorbed with the independence frequencies how one um, variable is depends on another variable whether they are uh, living with their parents whether their rent houses furnished or unfurnished whether they are uh, own owners so there will be more options so it will going to be in order to check the comparison between the empirically observed with the independence frequencies and uh, as you observe the chi squared methods or a technique can be used with many of the analytical software in, uh, that have a built in facility in order to do the categorization using chi squared analysis and here why we are going to use this chi squared analysis because it is very handy and uh, simple approach so it is available in the microsoft excel itself so that uh, for that purpose we are going to use this chi squared technology in order to do the categorizations and also we'll see the next topic that is weights of evidence coding so in short it will be considered as voe weights of evidence coding 
So as we all know that this categorization will going to reduce us the number of categories which are required for categorical operations or a categorical variables. So for continuous variables like uh, age and uh, continuous trace, for continuous variable categorization will introduce a new variable. Uh, like uh, as we grow up the age will going to be increased and also risk will going to be increased or decreased that means if you are having a continuous variable categorization is also going to be increased with a new variables consider a regression models with a age so consider a regression model there we are considering one data variable called age so there we have four categories so that three parameters it will going to for example, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 categories are there and it has a 3 parameters like young age, middle age and old age. And, and we have a purpose. So, here we have a 5 categories and uh, it will going to have 4 parameter characteristics. For example, 4 categories and uh, 3 parameters. 5 category, 4 parameter. Then if I have a 6 category, then 5 parameter. So, in that way you have to think. Okay, so the model then looks as follows. For example, by making use of this regression model, how can I do this weights of uh, evidence coding? You can see that y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 age 1 and h 2 age 3. So you can see that it has 3 parameters, 4 categories. Along with that, I have 4 parameters in the purpose. So it includes purpose 1 plus purpose 2 plus purpose 3 as well as purpose 4. Four. Okay. So, in order to do the categorization, along with that, having only two categoristics or a characteristics, the model still needs eight more parameters to be established. For example, it would be handy to have a monotonic transformation such that our model could be rewritten as. How can I rewrite this uh, existing weight of coding? for the regression model with respect to the age and purpose. So here y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 f of. So, so here uh, how many uh, categories we have for age? We have 4 categories and 3 parameters. For purpose we have a 5 category with 4 parameters. So instead of writing like this, I am just going to make it as 2 category. That is what f of age comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 plus b of 2 of f of purpose 1 purpose 2 3 4. So as you observed here, purpose is decreased by 1 because here we have only 4 purpose. So here weights of evidence of coding is also used either in order to increase or decrease the relationship with this y. So that you can see here, the transformation should have a monotonicity either increasing or decreasing relationship with y. So y is this one. How we are going to find the y? y will going to be find out with the categories along with their parameters. Weights of evidence coding to use or in order to have the monotonically increasing or decreasing relationship with the y. For that reason, we are going to have this weights of evidence coding. Then what is the use of having this weights of evidence coding? Uh, WOE that is weights of evidence coding transformations implements a transformation monotonically related to the target variables that is called y. Okay. So how can I minimize it or how can I do the categorization is uh, instead of having a four categories with three parameters or five categories with four parameter we can simply do like this that is what uh, y is equal to beta 0 plus beta 1 of weight of evidence coding age plus beta 2 weights of evidence coding with purpose. So this is more efficient and effective in order to do the categorization. So these are the methods will be used for the categorization purpose. Next we will see about the variable selection. So selection of best variable or a selection of a variable which will going to be contributed for the analytics is also going to play a very important role right. So uh, here that means we have tons of variables but only few will going to contribute to the prediction of the target 
variable so for that in order to select the variables or in order to select the uh, variable which will going to helps in order to predict the target variable we have a one method called filters so this filters methods are uh, very handy uh, very handy variable uh, selection method in order to get the variables for efficient usage in order to get a prediction of the target variable so how it will going to be work they work by measuring univariate correlation which is between the each variable and the target how each variable is reaching to the target so whether how they are related to each other so by that uh, mechanism we are going to do the filtering so by doing that filtering i can get the variable which will going to contribute to the uh, prediction of the target so as such they allow for a quick screening of which variables should be retained for further analysis so once i got that kind of uh, variable in the target then that variables will be used in order to retain for the further analysis so selection of variable must be very confidential and it must be uh, rate of selection of variables must be very high so there should not be any of the variables which is so far away from the target it must be relevant to the target and it has to have some predictions uh, towards the target variables and here it will going to be measures a linear dependency between the two variables and always varies between minus 1 and one, plus 1 so when we are having a comparison between one variable to another variable it is always ranges from minus 1 to plus 1 so to apply it as a filter one could select all the variables for which the Pearson correlation is significantly uh, different from zero. So other than zero, we are going to select the data variables that is according to the Pearson value, we are going to select ones where the value which is greater than 0 0.50. Also, high values of the Fisher score indicates the predictive variables. So if it is uh, belongs to same category, then that will helps to reach the target variable that will going to helps in order to indicate a predictive variables. So here the information value, which is a filter, which is based on the weights of evidence. So, and we are going to calculate this weights of evidence or we are going to have a selection of a variable as a information value following the rules of thumb that will going to be applied to the information value. So, how we are going to do that? If the value is lesser than 0 0.02, at that time it is unpredictive. And if it is uh, in the range between 0 0.02 to 0 0.1, it will be termed as weak predictive. Then if we have a value which is resides in between 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, somehow it is medium predictive, which is greater than 0 0.3, then that will be considered as a strong predictive. That means it will be considered as a predictive variable of the target. Next, we'll see the next topic that is related to segmentation. Why segmentation is required? So we are going to have our uh, like our data is going to be segmented before the analytical modeling starts because we have to understand whether which is required or not. So that means we have to make a segmentation whether it is required or not before that reaching to the modeling or uh, analytical model. So uh, carrying the garbage data or carrying a data which is not so uh, relevant to the analytics will going to create uh, some more garbages in the processing. So we have to do the segmentation, we have to make some categories or we have to distribute the uh, data elements which is not so relevant to the targets. For that purpose we have to have this segmentation. So mainly uh, doing of this segmentation is to what? For this could be for the purpose of strategy, for the purpose of strategy. If you take an example, banks might want to adopt the special strategies to uh, have a special segments of the customer like uh, whether they are having a, um, a current account, whether they are having joint account, whether it is minor account. So they are going to have some of the categories of a customer based on some strategy and also it could also be motivated from an operational viewpoint based on the operational viewpoints also we can make this segmentation mainly in order to improvise the efficiency that is the main usage of having this segmentation 
So the segmentation can be conducted using the experience and knowledge from a business expert. How can we do this segmentation? With the help of experience and knowledge from a business experts or it could be based on the statistical analysis. For example, decision tree and we have a K-means and we have a self-organizing maps. So these are the things which will be used in order to do the segmentation. Mainly we are going to categorize or we are going to make a segregation which will be helpful in order to make a strategic decision. We will see the next topic that is related to predictive analytics. So we have to analyze the predictive uh, things that means uh, predictive analytics the aim is to build an analytical model which predicting a target measures of the interest so we are thinking or we are analyzing about the target measures of interest which is based on the some analysis that analysis will be termed as what predictive analytics so it is it has a aim in order to build an analytical model and that analytical model will going to predict the target measures which is of interest in any of the area so the target is then typically used to see the learning process during the optimization procedure the target variable will be used or that will be used in the learning process so we are making that active so we are giving some input to that target variable during optimizing processes and also we have two types of predictive analytics so one is regression and another one is classification so in the predictive analytics in order to run a predictive analytical model we are going to produce the target measures of interest. That method is known as predictive analytics. Here also we have a two categories. One is regression and another one is classification. So what about this regression? This regression, the target variable is continuous. So here the target variable will be continuous. That is related to regression. So if you consider the age, age will be considered. Age will be continuous in nature. So here examples predicting a stock prices. So, stock prices can be continuous whether it is high or low, but it will be continuous and loss given default as well as it include customer lifetime value. Okay. So, these are the example which comes under regression. Then what about this classification? In the classification, the target is categorical. So, here the target will be categorical. Already we have discussed regarding the type of data values, whether it is continuous or a categorical. If it is categorical, whether it is nominal, ordinal or a binary. Okay. So, in the classification, the target is categorical and it can be binary. As I told, it can be binary. So, like a fraud, whether they are fraud or not, yes or no and turn and credit risk or it can be multi-class that includes predicting a credit rating. Okay. These are the example which comes under the category of this classification. These are the things which comes under the uh, category called classification. This is related to our predictive analytics and it is also important topic. I hope you all understood this uh, session. In the next session, let me continue with the unit 4 itself that is data pre-processing and analytics. Let me meet you in the next session. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.